Hello there, it's Jason from the Apatron team. So basically, uh, how to export a asymmetric model using the art rigging toolkit provided by Epic Games for Unreal 4. So uh, I was, uh, I've been digging into the engine and the uh, toolkit for the last uh, few days and trying to get um, some knowledge on it. And here's some an example. There wasn't really an example of someone bringing their own mesh into the game. So I kind of wanted to make a tutorial, not just uh, for myself and my guys, but maybe it could help some other people out there. So here's an example of a character we have that's... Uh, uh, pretty uh, early on in the process. It hasn't got the, uh, the details, the normals, or anything like that, or textured. It's just low poly um, mock-up, and I want to build a rig to his asymmetric and misproportioned arms and a ball hand. So how do I do that? Well, the uh, first thing you need to do is, before you even think about uh, bringing a character in into the uh, toolkit, uh, I'm assuming you guys already have it all installed, the toolkit, so I'm not going to go into any of that. The, the first thing you need to do is go into your settings and um, change your Z-axis uh, settings, preferences, uh, down to settings. Make sure your world coordinate system is in the Z-axis. That's pretty important because um, uh, the rigor will error off if you are in the y-axis and it'll flip your model around and, and this crazy stuff but anyways set your axis to the y at the z and then uh, make sure when your character is in the world coordinate system that it's facing down the minus y direction and one more thing i would suggest and this is just my own preference is that you prep your model a little before you go into uh, the rigging system. So what do I mean by that? It's something that I've learned from uh, other people. Uh, but basically, it's a great workflow to quickly rig and re-rig if you have to, like a crash, perhaps, um, or you mess up and you need to start from scratch your model and the rigging process. Um, so here's here's what I do. I open your script up, script editor, and here's your poly select convert space three new cluster space envelope one. Okay, well, let's try to explain that to you. You select this, drag it up to your custom bar here, and we will go ahead and uh, edit this real quick just so uh, we know what it is in the future. Edit it. The command, which is this right here. Let's name it um, uh, label CVC. And then the uh, the full name. Let's call it create volume cluster. And then we can go and put a tooltip in it here too. Uh, create a cluster uh, centered cluster based on selected volume. And save it out. All right, now we have this thing called CVC up here. And in fact, I think I learned this from a trick from uh, one of the digital tutors guys. But anyways, <clears throat> so what this does is, you know, when you're rigging and you move your bones in and out, and it's just uh, sometimes it's really a pain to get it centered, especially if you don't have a T-pose. Uh, not all the models we get <clears throat> come in from the models from the uh, T-pose. So, excuse me, I've been having a little bit of cold here. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how this function works. So let's say I want to have a bone straight to this ball. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the faces, and double click it, and then hit CVC. Boom. There's a uh, automatically centered clustered. Now what that does for me is that will go ahead and when I try to snap bones in place, I can go ahead and quick snap those bones, at least in the general area. Uh, it saves a lot of time in my opinion. Uh, but go ahead and go through your mess and... Um, figure out the places you want to do this kind of uh, quick snap. Make sure to release the uh, cluster before you move. Uh, this is helpful for the fingers and the tips for a lot of segments. Uh, quickly to place them. Uh, it'll save a lot of time on the, uh, the bone placing. Uh, go ahead and add your twist joints. You can basically select with uh, edges, your faces, uh, verts. So any kind of volume that matches your geometry will work just fine. The, uh, the cluster will uh, get in that proximity of the uh, selection 
and then you can at least use that for quick snap and then uh, small adjustments. The time save is the uh, huge amount of quick moving of bones. All right, so now you've seen I have the uh, clusters all in major areas of concern. Uh, I did leave. I'm going to add a belly bone, but I'll kind of I will visually place that um, from the side view, and then uh, the the uh, the neck and the head. I can also do that from the side view pretty easily, so I don't really need a cluster for that one. But this will make your workflow a lot faster. Um, on the back side, I uh, I'm not going to actually have the bones there. I'll snap a bones to the, uh, the outline to match the shape. Then I'll move the root system back over over the hips. So basically, once you get your clusters all done, you can save out your scene, and uh, you'll be able to import this into your next the next part. All right, we have open a, a brand new scene. Um, let's go to Epic Games and create rig character. And let's go ahead and uh, build our character. Number of spine bones three. Number of neck bones. I'm just going to do uh, one. And my left arm, I have a thumb, I don't have any pinkies. My right arm, I have a twist, but then I have no fingers. My left leg, I have both twist, include ball joint. Left foot. I have uh, just three toes, so, and I'm just going to do two, and the right leg, same as left, all right, so, so basically, uh, one of the main things is why I, did I not bring the mesh in now, well, there's a, there's a crash, and I don't know uh, why, I know I've installed uh, a new on a new computer, uh, a new install of Maya 2014, a new install of the tools, and if I have the have the uh, the mesh in before I have the skeleton built, it will crash during this process. So, in fact, I think I read on a forum some people were saying that, but never saw an answer. So a workaround that I found is just build the the skeleton first, and then we'll bring the character in afterwards. So um, I do want to have a uh, belly bone. Uh, leaf, or um, at least a jaw. Yeah, let's have a jaw here. Jaw one. And then I do want to jiggle my belly. No, I do want that off the uh, the pelvis. And then um, the jaw needs to be off the head, not the root. And, oh, I need one for my uh, my wonderful ball hand, so that's another leaf. And let's do that to the hand, my right hand. Okay. All right, so my three extra bones is for my jaw, for my belly, and for my ball. And that's all I need besides the regular uh, skeleton from above. So now we'll go ahead and do skeleton placement. Yes, I do. Right. This is now when we bring the model in. Uh, I don't really care about the uh, the mannequin here, so what I do is I turn that off. And then I go ahead and bring in my model now. So to avoid that crash I've been having. Bone Crusher. Model 5. All right, now you can see, whoa, this guy's pretty huge. Uh, he's actually the right size. I, I actually exported him out to ensure the size in the engine and then uh, adjust it accordingly. Uh, so one of the first things you do is um <coughs> click on your guy, and let's clean him up real quick before we do anything to him. I want to go ahead and change his name to just BC, take off the namespace and just have BC Mesh. We don't want double namespaces here for reference files. And enter. Don't freeze transforms or anything yet until we get the uh, the skeletons in place because that will kill your clusters. Just so you know. Uh, go ahead and uh, you can use your X-ray mode 
mode or you can also use your template mode here and uh, what you need to do is open your outliner open your joint mover let's go to uh, your torso your pelvis and what we need to do is we need to get our pelvis in the right spot alright so he's definitely not in the right spot right now I'll go ahead and hit uh, W for translate and hit V, you see how it turns to a circle, and then you can sit there and uh, snap this to there. Actually, um, undo that once. Let's turn off the uh, the model view. Sometimes if you don't have it in template mode, it will snap to the verts on the model. So let's go ahead and do that again. V and snap. Okay, let's turn this guy on template mode and bring him in I like to switch to the side view and you can see his his top of his butt is here so his hip needs to go down slightly here and in fact I kinda like using plus on my arrows to kinda help me guide where that top part of the butt is and this is probably a pretty good spot for the center of the pelvis right here I have the curvature going down of the legs and uh, you, uh, typically a top a uh, little less than the top of the butt for the pelvis uh, but it depends on your creature so that looks like a, a pretty good point there and I'll go ahead and get out of the the uh, back to perspective mode and what I want to do now is go ahead and snap to each one of these guys here. So I will go ahead and pick up my spine mover one, click snap, and then spine mover two. I want to go ahead and click snap. Spine mover three, another click snap. And then I will go ahead and go back to spine mover one, go back to side view, the right view, and move him back in line here. So now what I did was I just cheated, got the curvature from an existing geometry, and now I can just line up uh, just moving one axis to kind of give me a nice line from my pelvis to the first spine. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start working with the next. Let's take the neck control, go back to the uh, right view. So we went the neck somewhat. This guy's a little different, so I'm kind of adjusting to this line here. And then the head bone will be right behind the ears. So let's go about right. About right there. That's looking pretty pretty decent. He's kind of got a uh, <coughs> protruded, protruded neck to the front. So it's kind of, maybe I should have did two neck bones. But we'll go with one for now. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And then the head mover, let's move him right behind the ears here. And you can always turn that on if you need some help there. That's about right there. Let me check the neck. Okay. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. And let's go back to perspective. And we'll go back to template mode. Now, you know, you may want to say, well, why don't we scale these uh, boxes up, these bones? You, you can do that, but, you know, I, uh, I, I've done this a couple times, and it seems like the, the controls don't stay um, the size I need anyways. I do have a workaround for that. I can show you at the very end to, you know, to uh, 
make sure if you have a really big character like mine that the controls are going to fit him uh, for the riggers or for the animators actually all right so we got the head in we got the neck in let's go ahead and get the um, the arms in so the trick is for the arms we need to be in symmetry mode and uh, Symmetry mode is what you would want to be if both arms are exactly the same. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that just to s start spreading it out. Let's go to the left arm. And let's look at our front view. I will want to see the model in this one here. And I kind of wanted the collarbone. If I could guess where his collarbone would be, I would say something like that. It's pretty tough with him. He's pretty broad. So I'm thinking right here. All right. <clears throat> uh, and then now let's go ahead and move the, the arm pieces back in perspective mode. So this is where the... Uh, the bone snapping will be very useful. Let's go ahead and hold down V. We snap it to that. Then we'll go down to the lower arm. And we'll snap it to that. And then we'll go down to <coughs> hand mover and snap it down to there. And then let's do the upper arm twist. We'll twist that down to there. And the lower arm twist. That's close to it, right there. So. If you notice the uh, the boxes aren't pointing the right direction currently, we'll fix that soon. Um, we'll go ahead and um, come back to the fingers. I want to get all the symmetry things done first. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, the legs, left leg controls. You know, one thing I notice on here that the um, there is no f toe. Controls. You have to do those actually uh, by clicking on the controls themselves. So I'm not sure if that was just an oversight. Let's go ahead and let's go back to the front. Let's go ahead and move this guy to the side here. That doesn't help. Okay. I like to keep the uh, <coughs> the thigh bones the same axis as the pelvis. Um, that's really <coughs> just preference here because I really don't want to move it up and down. Now, if you had some weird creature, a quadruped or something, that would be a different story. So I think that's looking pretty good. And let's go back to perspective. And move to our calf meter mover. And let's pop him into place. This is actually pretty close. Or actually here, the knee. And then the foot. And then the ball mover. I actually did not put a uh, bone there, but it's okay. I'll go ahead and put that down. Pretty happy with that. It's about where the ball of the foot would be. And our thigh mover. Uh, calf twist. All right. Now we're looking pretty good. We got our knee, we got our calf twist, we got our thigh twist, we got our hip. And now we're actually ready to start doing some uh, non symmetric work. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's go back to the fingers here. So the left fingers index. Actually, let's do the thumb first. 
B and hold it. Snap. Snap and hold. This is really, if you have uh, lots of fingers or lots of pinnitus, this is really where your saber is. Index. Index 2. Index 3. Middle. All right, I was able to get those fingers in real quickly. And plus, if uh, something happened, I crashed. Uh, I didn't want to spend all the time adjusting it manually with the iometer. And uh, it's just really frustrating. So this is definitely good for fingers. If, if you don't use this for anything, definitely use it for fingers. It's really a time saver. All right, so let's see here. Uh, there's a lot of footwork to do down here. So let's go ahead and do that, too. Um, <coughs> Again, there is no no builder uh, outliner for the the leg control itself, so you're gonna have to actually do it manually. So let's see here. Let's that one. We'll pop it in right here, and then that one. I notice you have to be really careful what you click on on here. Actually, my example on this one, it's uh, not the best example because I forgot I had uh, not centered this, the cluster exactly in the center. I just wanted to get the, uh, the spacing, so I will go ahead and correct that now. I've got all three of these here. And now since I have them all there, I will select this one. Select this one, select this one, and we'll go ahead and move those down into the foot a little bit now. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and take the template off and look at x-ray mode. That sometimes is helpful. Let's go ahead and do that one right there. So all I had to do was go up and down instead of left uh, x and y also. So that's the advantage of doing at least that one snap point. I think that's looking pretty good. I go back and fix this one. This goes to the center one here. Again, you need to be in templated mode for that to cluster, not to interfere with the uh, the mesh itself. I go back and snap this one to that cluster. Snap this one to that this cluster. All right, now we're starting to look pretty good. All right, so uh, there's also some pivot controls here that we need to, uh, to fix. And uh, one of the things I like to do is just grab all of them here. And we'll go ahead and bring that down. I'll line the first one up in the back. Okay. And then this one. The reason I brought them all the same, uh, selected them all at the same time was to keep them all in the same plane. Uh, it's usually helpful, and or it really maybe not really matter, just preference I guess. And then we'll move this up to the to the right foot up here. You could do this in symmetry mode, but my foot's different on their side, so I'm doing each one separately. And then the toe tip, the toe pivot. That's pretty good there, because I kind of want the, the fingernail to dig in the ground a little bit. All right, let's see here. All right, I think I got everything done on this side. Um, it's looking pretty good, and we'll go over to the other side. And this one is not exactly the same, so I will go ahead and snap the the right leg calf mover to the mechanical cyborg metal leg. I mean, it's grandma, uh, reminds me of Grandma's boy a little bit, but he only got half the surgery done. One metal leg. Let's see here. All right, the foot mover. Yeah, that's pretty cheesy. Okay. The foot. 
same process basically. And uh, we'll go get the die, die twister. Got it right there. Actually, I did not have the twister on the calf, and I don't know why it built one. It's kind of unusual, but I will go ahead and place it anyways. That might might be another bug on the. Uh, the skeleton because I was pretty sure I did not select having twist bones and I wouldn't have it because they are metal legs so but I'll place it there for now uh, okay we're looking pretty good um, the head the neck okay we need to get to the this arm is a little bit different so I need to fix this one up now go back to arm controls Right arm. And I will snap this to this guy. And then to the elbow. And then the hand. I will snap to him. And then upper twist bone will be to this guy. Lower twist bone will be to that guy. All right, now that's looking pretty good. And now I know I have a ball, the belly, to place. So let's see here. Custom leaf joints. Let's go here. Move my ball to the center of that ball. All right. And then the jaw. Let's go ahead and move the jaw. Close up, go to the right view, and I do want to turn that mesh on a little bit. And with x-ray mode, let's see, <clears throat> he's kind of hard to see a jawline in him actually, but I think, I think I'll be okay, like right there. And then the belly. Move him. Sometimes, uh, <clears throat> getting the exact placement for the jiggle is pretty important. I kind of want it to sag down a little bit here, so maybe it has a little up and down swag. Let's go right here. Let's see, this volume, belly. I think that'll work good right there. All right, finally, let's see here. That still took a pretty good amount of time. Uh, all right, we got a clavicles. Just do a system checks here. Belly, we got pelvis, we got legs, we got twist bones. We did not do the foot and the toes. Ah, it's a good thing I checked. on the right leg. Let's go ahead and move the ball up. It's kind of odd for a metal foot to have a ball, possibly, but it'll work. Okay. And again, we don't have the controls on the uh, outliner for the, uh, the toes, so I will go ahead and pick this and snap him. Oh, you got to go with trans template mode here. And then snap him to the toe. Snap the other guy out of the way. He's in our way right now. All right. And the same thing with the the pivot points. down on the ground. Looking pretty good. And 
than the uh, toe. Pivot point. All right, now I think we're good. I think we're ready to do uh, to fix this up. What we need to do is go to picker, and we need to hit aim. What that does it aims the uh, the joints basically where they will become joints, and then after I turn aim off, it will readjust the boxes to point the correct way. So yes, that's the uh, what we want to see. It's looking pretty good. I think I have uh, everything how I need it. And now it's time to... Now there's one little issue here I, I see here. This control here will be a... Uh, could potentially be a problem when it does the rig pulls. It may transform my ball a little bit. So let's see here. I, I may not like that too much. But we'll, we'll deal with it at that point. So, uh, the next thing is the deformation setup. Before you do that, now is the time to get rid of your your clusters. Let's go ahead and delete those out of the scene. Now let's go ahead and turn X-ray mode on. Select this guy. Let's freeze him. Do his history just to make sure I didn't forget anything, and uh, it's pretty important to to rename this as the mesh layer. That's good enough. All right, let's do the deformation setup. And remember, I before I hit that, I I still have the mannequin on underneath there. If you see, he's still there. I just didn't want to see him anymore. So he's still on. Let me turn him back off. Create rig pose. Sure. Yes. And yes, it did do a nice little pose. Save it. No, we don't want to do the uh, the skin weight proxy because we don't want to use the mannequin uh, guy. We want to use our own, so no. All right, so uh, my skeleton is not bound to my mesh right now, so I need to fix that. So let's go ahead and take this off. Read only. Um, let's get our outliner up here and select our mesh. Uh, actually, select our, our root. And then right click on it and hit select hierarchy. Select the mesh. Go to our animation mode and skin. Bind skin, smooth bind. And let's keep the uh, max influences to three. Joint hierarchy, dual contorian, interactive, weight distribution. Um, it's all good here. Hit by skin. And now my all right <clears throat> had a weird selection mode going on there. All right, so basically now I have my mesh selected to my uh, my monster. It's great. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, skip the uh, the painting weights explanation that's uh, you can use this click this character and then hit paint weights and then we can go ahead and start painting the weights with their tools so I'm gonna pause and come back and fully weighted <coughs> all right so I have a uh, quick um, uh, just dirty weight map to it. It's definitely not the best. It's gonna work with the example though. So I'll go ahead and hit build control rig. Let's make a new folder. We'll call him Bone Crusher. And 
build. Nice picture of them in. Take a picture. Okay, and it's done. So now if I go to character rig, add character for animation, I should have my Gentai Bone Crusher, add and close. All right, so there he is, he's inside, and uh, it's lovely, my weight map's not the best, but that'll be fixed once I uh, spend some time on it. For the example, it's great. Uh, one of the things you notice, though, is that it's a a um, a problem because I can't really see my my uh, my controls are too small. So how do I fix that? Well, let's let me show you that real quick. What you really need to do is um, open up a uh, the actual scene. So if I go to my anim rig, there's a bone crusher underneath my Hagenti folder. Open that up, and let's not save this. This is actually your rig file, so be careful in here. Uh, what I want to do is turn on my template mode, select on these these controls here, and hit F8, which goes me takes me to component mode. So the wonderf wonderful thing about this is that component mode, I can actually change the size of these controls by actually putting rotation values on it. So I'll select these, and then I'll scale those out. So I can turn my mesh on and off. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and select these up here. Scale it out. And maybe I want to change the shape a little bit. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and select and there's that. So you get the point, same thing for the hands. Click on that. I need to make those a little bigger. And there you go. F8 to get out of this mode. And then um, you save your settings. Let's go to new scene. Let's go Epic Games, add character for animation. And we'll go to the one that we just changed. Hit add and close. And now those control rigs should be a size worth using. I did try using uh, the scaling the, uh, the pieces uh, and the rig, but I had troubles. Um, I, I found this was just easier to edit it afterwards, and now I can actually take my guy and, and uh, do all the stuff I need to do with him. Yay! Now, once I get fixed my weight maps, he'll be ready to go straight into the engine, and I'll start playing around with him.